What in the world is a zine? So one of the things I do talk a lot about is tech fatigue. I want you to think about this for a second. If you have older kids who have cell phones and they're using laptops all day in the classroom, because a lot of teachers are now using uh, different apps in the classroom, kids can possibly go all day long on a laptop, all day long on a screen, then on their cell phone, then go home and do more cell phone. Uh, maybe they're watching YouTube videos. Maybe they're on Instagram. Maybe they're video gaming. My goodness, talk about too much technology. So how do we get kids off a little bit, right, off the screen? Well, one way to do it is through this thing called zines, short for mini magazines. And so here are some examples, and this is just using a sheet of paper. And so there are different types of zines that you can make, and I'm just going to list some of them here. So they can do photography. Notice how they can do mixed media. So they can take pictures, they can do drawings, they can get pictures from magazines, right? So think of it kind of like collages. They can do political zines, social zines that they're really interested in, you know, animal rights and so forth. Fan zines, they're interested in certain music, right? Certain, like we said, sports or hobbies, personal zines, uh, health zines. So you can choose a topic for them or they can do their own. Again, here are some other ones, right? So again, just a sheet of paper. I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay, again, you can get your little ones to do zines. Here's more, more sophisticated ones, right? More artsy ones. And what I'm going to do here, uh, so this is my sister-in-law who actually does zine workshops at libraries. And again, it's become a very popular uh, hobby, right? And I'm just going to show you more. This is a zine workshop. So I want you to think about yesterday, right? Um, all of a sudden, no internet, right? Uh, yeah, I know my camera's not working. So that's why I can't have my camera on. <laughs> I tried, uh, but just here, imagine yesterday, you know, no internet, can't use the apps, can't use Google Slides, whatever. What if you already had them doing zines on some couple of sheets of paper, they can create their little mini books about whatever you're teaching, right? I had my ELD students talk about, uh, tell me the story of the monkey's paw in your own words, right? So they can create their own books. Here is an example of a zine festival. So again, extremely popular, right? There's conventions all over LA and all over the state, actually. So there you go. People selling their own zines, maybe even exchanging. So think about having uh, your own class exchange of zines. Um, one of the things that students do is they make their little mini magazines, get the, somebody to photocopy a whole bunch, and now they have, they're a published work, right? A published author. They've been able to produce many. And then some people even sell them, okay? So let me go ahead and jump over here. And I'm gonna show a little video since I can't show, uh, I was gonna do a demonstration, but let me go here. And I'm just gonna walk you through how to put together a zine. So give me a second. Mm -hmm. And please let me know if you don't hear, you don't hear the sound. Thank you. Give me one second and we are puts it this way, a non-commercial, often homemade, or online publication, usually devoted to specialized and often unconventional subject matter. In short, a zine is something that you make yourself about whatever you want it to be about, even if it's super weird or unique to you as a person. People will often make zines about topics or communities that mean a lot to them, such as feminism and human rights. However, you can make a zine, for example, about something you're a fan of, referred to as a fanzine, or even a zine that's just about you and your life, called a personal zine, or perzine for short. Artists will also create zines to distribute their work, whether they're illustrators, photographers, writers, whatever you can fit into the pages of a zine goes. Someone who creates zines is called a zinester. The term zine came from the 1920s or 30s, when sci-fi geeks would create zines about themselves and share them with each other. 
zine culture exploded in the 70s when the punk scene emerged. People would create music zines to draw more attention to bands they liked. Most scenes are made by cutting and pasting pages together, photocopying them, and then binding them into a booklet, typically with staples. However, there are a lot of zines that are made with unconventional materials into unconventional shapes. And there are also digital zines. Basically, there are zero rules here. Your zine can look however you want it to look. You don't necessarily have to be an artist to create a zine. All you really need is paper, a pen, and something to say. Hope you enjoyed the video. Next week, I'll be uploading episode 2, How to Make Your Own Zine. Subscribe to be notified when it goes up. All my social media links are in the description. I make my own zines and I post about it sometimes. Thanks for watching. <laughs> All right. So that's a little bit on um, how, uh, you know, the history of zines. But let me show you this one also. Making. It's so much fun. All you need is one single piece of printer paper, eight and a half by 11 inches. With this, you can make an eight page zine, believe it or not. So, how you ask? It starts with folding. Fold the paper hot dog way. Open it back up. Oh, that hot dog was so good, but I'm really hungry for a hamburger now. Good thing I made a barbecue. Now, it gets a little trickier from here. You gotta fold in the sides to that center line you've just created with your hamburger fold. Open everything back up. And one more time with the hamburger fold. Now we're gonna take our friends the scissors and cut a little slit on the folded edge right to the middle. Open it back up. Saying hello to our friend the hot dog one more time. Stand it up on its end and squish it together and fold all the pages together. And you have the skeleton of your eight page zine. All right. I won't show all of that. All right. So that's pretty much what a one page zine looks like. All right. So again, think about yesterday and not having any internet and a lot of kids maybe just sitting around a simple one page sheet of paper, right? They can make their own little book, decorate it, come up with their own stories and there you go. You can even have your own little zine festival there. I'm going to go ahead and give you time to think about how you can use anything we just talked about today. Zines, right? And here's a class that I taught at Cedar Lane. And they were doing zines, right? Uh, all within one class period. I showed them the history. I showed them how. And then they got to it. And they created their own little zines. So I'm going to go ahead and as I get uh, your timesheets ready, and also the raffle, I'd like you to take some time to answer this, these questions here. Okay, so this is on Pear Deck. So uh, answer the questions there, and I'm gonna go back to actually my Pear Deck. And answer those questions there. Oh, and by the way, on this Google slide, I'm gonna go ahead and give you this template for a Who Am I poem. This is what I use with that class at Cedar Lane. They first wrote their poem, a Who Am I poem, coming up with something from nature, an animal, a place. After they made their poem, they turned it into this I am poem, as you see here, and then we turned it into a zine. So you can, you know, do that tomorrow if you don't have a lesson ready to go and you want to give something, maybe if you're going to be out for a sub, that would be a great little lesson to do. Okay.